Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. If you guys would, just join me in prayer for just a moment. Father God, we just so thank you that we can say that we're again in the house of God. House of prayer. And Father God, we come with an expectancy that we'll not leave like we came. But the Spirit of God will move upon each one of us. And we will hear what God has to say this evening. And Father blessed, we so thank you for the supply of the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ in our lives. And may, Father God, you get honor and glory from this church this night. We declare it and decree it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I knew it was about time for the pastor to ask me to come and teach. You know, the last time I, I taught in the church, I, I told you God had been moving upon me to, to teach a certain way. Well, this thing started the first of the week. Monday, matter of fact. And I've had a week of being under the influence of the Spirit of God. And I believe that we're going to, we're just going to have a good time tonight. I really do. And what I'm going to speak about tonight is, is the, the heart of God. Jesus said, Do you not know that if you've seen me, you've seen the Father? And Jesus said, I do nothing unless the Father tells me. So we have to know this. What Jesus spoke to the church was the heart of the Father. You know, I, for years, and I've heard this for years and years, that the Word of God is the most powerful thing in the universe. God had me teaching on love for two years and three months, and that's all I taught on. And I got revelation about love that I hadn't had. I don't want to discredit the Word of God in any way, shape, or form. But I want to say this. I think the strongest thing in the universe is not the Word of God, but the love of God. If you think about it now, God is a God of faith. Everything He did was in bounds of faith. But his faith did not work outside of love. And God himself is called love. God the Almighty is not called word. Jesus is the word. But where did the word come from? It had to come out of the love of God. I'm not going to teach on love tonight. <laughs> this came to me this week. Everything that God did, He did for the love of His family. Love moved God 
to create a universe. And if we read Genesis, it'll tell us the generations in which it took to, to create all these things. It wasn't done in seven days. It said, this is a generations in the very last of where he created everything. This is the generations. So we know it's not seven days as we know seven days. A day with the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years is a day with the Lord. So there's generations in, in his days. And I really don't know what a generation is. <laughs> I've heard 50 years. I've heard 100 years. I don't know. And I don't know that, that anybody, unless God tells them, I'm not sure they're going to know what a generation is until he tells them. We know this. I have, right now, I'm looking at three generations in my life. Counting my life, my sons and daughters, and then their children. So it hasn't taken 50 years. So I don't know. But anyway, all this was done. All the creation that God did was done out of His love. See, God's the type of being that has already got a plan. From the very beginning, He knew that I was going to be here. See, that made him able, back there before the foundation of the earth, to love me before I even got here. Say, boy, that's a strong one. Think about it, though. Or as he told Jeremiah, he knew him when he was even in the womb of his mother. <laughs> but you'll find other places he tells about things he knew before the foundation of the earth. And it wouldn't surprise me if he couldn't at that time call us by name and we hadn't even been born yet. That's just how awesome he is. Now, it is abnormal for a Christian not to have an appetite for the impossible. I want you to think about that now. There's not one of you in here right now that doesn't have a desire to be able to lay hands on a person and get them healed. You can't do it in your power. That's an impossibility. But you have that desire in you. That desire come out of you being created in the image of God. And it's been written... in our spiritual DNA to hunger for the impossible. And we expect the impossible to bow its knees to Jesus Christ. I want to talk about several things this afternoon. Raising the dead, for instance. That wasn't a biggie with Jesus. But we as a church world, as it were, then we just don't think about that very much. When somebody dies, you know, we, we, we grieve about it. We don't, we don't really think about Oh man, I'm going up there and I'm going to do my best to raise him from the dead. 
We don't do that. It ought to be a matter of fact in our lives if we're going to do what Jesus did to have that in our mind. Think about it now. He said, do those things that I did, but greater things than these. See, he's wanting us to do greater things than he did. He said, I'm going back to the Father. I'm giving this job to you. Why are we not geared in such a way the first thing we think, I've got to go raise him from the dead, or raise her from the dead. Now, I understand this now, that there's times when God does not want us to raise somebody from the dead. I understand that. When my mother died, it was the strangest thing that ever, I'd ever witnessed is my mother leaving. But when she went into a coma, God said this to me. She will never have a better time to come home than right now before the, uh, because of the pain that's before her. God knew my mother. I knew my mother. I knew what he was talking about. She was an awesome woman. But her faith level wasn't there where she could keep her healing. What was God telling me? I'd, I could keep her from dying. He put that power within my, my ability to keep her alive. And that's the way I took it. She'll never have a better time to come home than right now. What would that sound like to you? You have a choice. If you want to be so heartless as to bring her back from where she's at, knowing that she's not able to keep her healing, now she's going to have to go through that pain just because you want her to stay here. I couldn't do that to her. I wasn't that strong. Instead, I ran to the end of the hall and I said, I ask you not to let her suffer. I went back in the room. She's going home. Just that quick. Why? Because he's so awesome, he's going to tell us things. We're going to know things. If you pay attention to what's going on, you're going to, you're going to have an understanding that you were in the presence of God at that time. When you have a great unction in your life, and that unction won't go away, you're in the presence of God. And if you really think about it, you are in the most awesome place that, that you could be in in all the universe. Why? The power of His love has something to say to you. There are certain times when the Spirit of God will come on you and you'll, you'll speak in tongues at a fervency that a lot of people wouldn't understand. And I found in my lifetime as a rule, when that comes about, uh, he allows me to interpret. Now there's times when, when I'm praying real strong and I, I know I'm in the presence of God and I ask him to let me interpret. And there's been times when he said, not the time. It's not the time. But somewhere, maybe uh, 30 minutes or an hour on down, I'm still praying, you know, and then he allows me to interpret. I didn't need to hear what he, I was saying or didn't need to know what I was saying just before that, you know. He is awesome in such a way that he knows what you need. So we're going to talk about 
the heart of God. Um, I would call it, we have that spiritual DNA in us that longs for miracles, signs, and wonders. You know, when somebody is healed, that's a miracle, but it's also a sign and a wonder. Many times when God heals a person, you'll see a lot of people get saved. I'm talking about bringing them back from the dead, more or less. Or even if they've got a, a really bad disease, you know, uh, and God heals that person, and you'll find people coming to the Lord. There's something about the power of God that it just almost seems like it demands for you to come and be a part of what He's doing. You know what I'm saying? It just seems that way. But our, our DNA makeup is, 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 has in it a desire to see this happen. This time after time after time. Now, before we have revivals, and, and you guys have read this in books, there was a long period of praying before these things, this, this revival came up, uh, about. If you have desires in your heart, I want you to listen to me closely on this now. It may not be your desire, per se. It may be the desire of God that He wants to take you to a place in Him where if you will allow Him out of this desire He's placed in you, He can take you to a different place in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Does that make sense to you? You have to be willing when you have these desires to cultivate them. I'm going to give you a good example of what I'm saying. 20 years ago, I wouldn't want to preach at all. I mean, I wouldn't want to preach at all. I loved what I was doing. I was laying hands on people, and I was seeing lots of people get healed. I was getting people filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues. And that was, that was a playing field for me, and it was a wonderful place. <laughs> then I, got the de I kind of got the desire, I need to preach some. So what do you do in a case like that? <clears throat> you want a revival, you want to pray about it. If you, if you got that desire to preach, then you're going to have to pray about it. Now we're in a situation where my time is not just working for me like I would want it to, where I can read more of the Bible and, and I got to praying to God about, teach me to redeem my time, Father God. And you'll find out one thing about God. <laughs> There's things in your life that's really, really, really fun to do. And they get to the point where that redeeming your time, you don't have time for that fun thing. It's more fun to be with God. See, God's taken you that place you prayed about, about redeeming your time. Things that were important to me 20, 25 years ago, they don't bother me at all. I'm talking about they just don't bother me. I'm not concerned with them. 
man, there was a time when I was fishing about all the time. <laughs> I really was. And I had a bunch of friends that loved to fish. And we were going to fish two or three times every week. I can't tell you the last time I went fishing. I bet it's been four or five years ago. Because God will take those kind of desires from you. You'll have a great desire. Your desire ought to be growing for God all the time as a Christian. You know, godly things. Things that please Him. See, Jesus was with the Father before He comes to the earth. See, He knew the Father. But as a boy now, as a human being, I'm sure He had to learn some things about getting closer to God. You know, when He was a young man, you know, He, he said to His mother, don't you know that I must be about my Father's business? But God can can put desires in your heart, God can take desires out of your heart. If He can put them there, He can take some of the old ones out that you don't need. But here again now, you're going to have to pray about these things to get, get these things done, you know. And it's, you, you, you just have to spend time with Him. He's, he's an awesome, awesome, awesome God. Uh, let's go to Mark uh, 16. Mark 16. And I know you guys know this. Um, you probably know it by heart. Um... But we're speaking about the heart of God. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized. shall be saved. But he who believes not shall be damned. Now, you, you might wonder at times why God would put, if you don't do it, you'll be damned. See, God tells the truth. He wants you to know both sides of the coin. And these are signs shall follow them that believe. My name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up service and they Drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That is the heart of God. Because Jesus only spoke what he heard his father say. If he told Jesus to do it, to speak a certain thing, that's what God wanted to happen. That was the will of God. So, we're to do that will and lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Now, I, this is my, my take on what I'm about to say. For you to have a really strong desire to do these things. Now, I mean, that's, you may sit in a chair and want to do them. You know what I'm saying? You just may want to sit there and think, well, I'd like to do that. But then you've got to have a get up and go to do it. You know, you're not going to do it sitting on the couch. So, I would pray about it. I'd say, Lord, I want you to open up doors so that I can help somebody. There have been many days and if you'll do it in times of impossibilities you'll find out your greatest 
miracles would come then. I'm on an airplane. I'm getting ready to get on an airplane. I said, Lord, I need to help somebody today. And I'm telling you, God opened a door up that was just absolutely awesome. And the woman was so happy that I got to talking to her. They couldn't find a good church to live in Charlotte. But I gave her my, my email address and, and when they get back off vacation, we're going to talk together. And we're going to find her a, a good church. I know, I know there's some good churches in Charlotte. But you need somebody to help you find them. That's a door open. You know, we as Christians ought to be, it ought to be more natural for us to walk in the supernatural than it is in the natural realm. But you've got to earnestly desire that. We had a guy to come to our house uh, Saturday and I got to talking to him and and he talked to me I asked him if he had a good church he said uh, he said no he said I don't go to church he said I just believe that the church is on the inside of you and, and I, I just stay home and, and that's, that's where my church is I said well but that's not the word of God for you. And I gave him the word of God, you know, on it. He had a herniated disc. And I believe with all my heart, God healed him of that. God just opened up another door for me. I just, I was thinking about that. After that happened, I got thinking, Lord, you, this, this, this last month, Wow, you did this, and you did this, and you did this. My, you did this and this. Just open up the doors. But it come out of praying. I, I really believe that. I really believe for us to see the miraculous, we're going to have to spend time praying about it. Having a desire. You know, a lot of times I just don't sit down and pray about it. I said, Lord, I, I just, I just want to help somebody today. And then I'll say something maybe like, uh, Holy Ghost, I, you're a big part of my life and I need for you to show up. And let's just help somebody. And it, you'd just be surprised if people, you don't even know them. I'm at the gym and somebody told them I was a preacher, you know, and here they come and ask me a question. I get, I get to talk to them about it. And there has been times, I'm telling you, this is the truth, there has been times, most of my time was spent talking to a person rather than exercising. And that's fine with me. I can exercise any time. But it, it, it comes out of praying. Praise God. Now, like I said, uh, Mark 16 is, is uh, out of the heart of Jesus. Why? You know, we might ask, why was that the heart of, of Jesus? <laughs> and it just comes right back around another circle because he said, those things I do, I, I, I do them to please the Father. His heart was to please the Father. Jesus Christ went about doing good and healing all that were pressed to the devil because it Please the Father. And to me, now this is this is uh, the heart I'd like to have. I just I, I would just like to please the Father. Praise God. And this is part of that spiritual DNA I was talking about uh, that we have in us to please the Father, please the Lord Jesus, please the Holy Ghost. 
and it brings salvation to the spirit, soul, and the body. And our desire is to destroy the works of the devil. You say, well, uh, salvation is not for the body. Sure it is. It's salvation for the soul too. You take a man, now the soulless realm in the head, the, the intellect and so on and so forth. You take a man who's lost his mind, the only way probably to get him back into his mind is for the salvation of the Lord to come upon him and heal his mind. You say, well, the body can't be saved. Sure it can. All these people that have cancer and, and all these ugly, evil diseases that have been healed over the years, their body got saved from that that enemy. And that's, that's what our work is. Is to come against the enemy. Praise God. We must destroy the works of the devil. And, uh, you know, I kind of got ahead of myself a little bit while ago, but the secret to Jesus' ministry is seen in, in his statements. He made certain statements that would tell you, and this is one of them, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the Father do. The Son does in like manner. And I speak to the world those things which I heard from the Father. His obedience put the bounty of heaven on a collision course with desperate conditions of mankind in the earth. And it was his dependence on the Father that brought forth the reality of the kingdom into this world, the kingdom of God. It's what enabled him to say, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That was his pleasing the Father. The kingdom of God is within us. What is the kingdom of God? It's a place where God rules in the heart of man. And if God rules, we can ask him and petition him for certain things. Now, Dick and I have become good friends over the years. I call us good friends, would you? Uh, just an awesome addition to my life. If you'll pay attention over the years, God will place people in your lives. And you know God done it. It just seems like God tagged those people just to be a part of your life, to enrich you. See, that pleases the Father. That come out of the power of love. You know, there's times when I'm in the presence of, of a person and I just sense the love of God overtaking me. It just seems like I'm in a bubble of love. What's that all about? 
You're in the presence of God. You're in an awesome place. And chances are you're going to be able to help that person. God will always work it out. If he's, if he's got something for that person and you can serve him in helping that person, you'll just start speaking out. God will put words in your mouth. He is a master at putting words in a person's mouth. And they're supernatural words. And I've seen it happen time and time again. I don't talk like that. I do not put words together like that. But God does. And see, you know it's God. You know that you are in the presence of God. Praise God. Let's go to uh, Luke 4, 16. Luke 4, 16. Praise God. We're going to do 16 through 21. 4, 16. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on Sabbath day and stood up to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found a place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, preach deliverance to the captive, deliverance to the captives, and... Uh, giving sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Here again, <clears throat> this is the will of the Father. Now, if you read that, that scripture, read it this week, this coming week, read that thing say at least ten times. Now, I've got a reason for saying that. Read it at least ten times this week. Why would you want to do that? Because that is the very thing that God brought him into the earth to do. That was, uh, if you want to call it a job, that was a job that pleased the Father. Now again, I'm going to say this. Jesus said, do those things I did. See? So we're to do, we're to, we're to uh, do exactly what he did. Praise God. Let's uh, stay in chapter 4 of Luke uh, 33 through 36. 33 through 36. And in the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit and an unclean devil. And he cried out with a loud voice saying, Let us alone. What are we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Thou come to destroy us. I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him saying, Hold the peace and come out of, them, out of him. And when the devil had thrown him, mist came out of him and hurt him not. Here again, Jesus is doing a miracle. Jesus is doing a sign to all those people who saw what was going on. And I'm sure it was a wonder. So he was doing miracle signs and wonders. I think that we're in the very, very last of the last days. I really believe that. And I'm telling you, this old world needs to know Jesus. Let's go to Luke 13. Praise God.
Luke 13 and 11. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity. Now this is a uh, this is one of my all-time favorite healings that Jesus did. And I'm going to show you why I say that. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years, was bowed together, and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her unto him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loose from an eye infirmity. And he lays his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered within the nation, because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day, and said unto the people, There are six days in which men ought to work, and them therefore come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. And the Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, doth not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass from a stall and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound these eighteen years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? And when he had said these things, all of his adversaries were ashamed, and all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. See, this wasn't the only thing that he did. It says all the glorious things he did. So there had to be other things he did. It was told that if all the miracles that Jesus did were written down, it very possible the world couldn't, couldn't hold the books. So, Jesus did a bunch of miracles that's not in the book. He did hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miracles. You might say, why are you teaching along these lines? We heard all this. We know all this. I'd like to stir up your hearts and your holy minds to a point that you take over the city with miracle signs and wonders. When God opens a door to you and He asks for you to spit on somebody, You cannot be ashamed. Now God asked me to do this one time. And I mean in a crowd of people. One man sitting in a wheelchair. I couldn't do it. And I'll tell you, I've, I, it's bothered me for 30 years I couldn't do it. But then I came to a realization that I was only a babe in Christ. I was just getting really hungry for, for the Lord. And then I realized through, this happened a couple of times, different times, big things, you know. I wasn't seasoned enough to be able to do it. But you can never be ashamed of what God asks you to do. You cannot. You cannot. And he's not going to ask you to, to go to the cross. See, that was the hard part. Jesus came to show us the way of the Father. Miracle signs and wonders should be a big, big, huge, humongous thing in the church. It's a calling card of God. And I'm going to say this. I really believe if you don't use the gifts, they won't stick around forever. The gifts of God that He places upon men, they're here in the church 
to bring babes into Christ. I know you've heard about the fire you know of God and, and people will stand and watch a fire where they won't do when they won't do anything else. You know. But when people see you lay hand on the sick and, and get them well, they will indeed take notice. Now you'll see people jump up and run too. And I've often wondered if that wasn't demonic Activity, you know what I'm saying? They got to see God in action. What was that action all about? Here again, we're going to say love was a motivator of, of God doing that miracle for that person. And it's a privilege. And it was reserved for us in these last days. This, this last leg of the run. You know, Paul used the uh, analogy of a race. You're running a race. And we're running a race also, you know. If he was running a race, we're running a race. But I believe this, we're in the last leg of the last race. I really do. And I would absolutely love to see God's people come together in this power that He's given into the church and make a difference in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. The church ought to be one of the most powerful entities in the earth. Would you agree with me on that? It should be. You know, I don't know whether it was Brother Hagen, or, but if somebody said, actually, television is actually brought into existence for the church. And I believe that. I believe it, it should have been used for the church to get the gospel to all the world. And then they've polluted it so that you can't, can't watch most of what's on it anymore. Praise God. You know, if you really get thinking about it, the church ought to be an explosive place. The works of God just exploding all around in, in, the, in the city. That ought to be the norm. You know, uh, when Paul and, and, and these guys were preaching back then, they said, uh, he's turning the world upside down. And they've come here with that same same doctrine. But he's turning the world upside down. See, uh, they were exploding with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just bringing it and just raining down on the people. And, and, and a lot of people are going to get mad. If you think for one minute everybody's going to be happy when you show up to bring somebody back from the dead, you are wrong. First of all, it goes against the grain of their doctrine. Miracle signs and wonders are not for today. <laughs> oh, my, 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 my. And you, if you'll notice, uh, the church has gotten, and a lot of churches, it's so proper. And everything is right down to the second. It's the same way last Sunday and the Sunday before. And then 10 years ago, they were doing the same thing. You know, they changed the songs, and changed a little bit of the Scripture, and it is a little bit. But mankind has gotten his ways into the church. Mankind has listened to the devil. 
and let the devil take the power of God out of the out of the church. In many places, taking the love out of the church. And the same church is taking the word out of the church per se. I'm telling you, I've been in church. I'm telling you the truth. The sermon did not quote one scripture during the whole time that we were in church. Didn't happen. And what does that do for the church? It makes the church impotent. A strong, explosive church has to have the Word of God. It has to have the love of God. And then it has to have men and women just getting up out of their chairs and saying, I'm not going to watch television. I'm just going to go out and talk to somebody about the Lord. And if you get in that habit, it seems like, I don't know, it just seems like it's a, it comes to you a whole lot easier than it ever has, you know? Praise God. And I believe also that God... Uh, opens those doors. I think uh, talking about uh, ordering the church, that is a poor, poor substitute for the power of God. Church, we want to walk in the power of the living God. We want to get people saved. We want to get people healed. We want to make a difference in the earth. And I just challenge you this week. And I challenge you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Find somebody to lay hands on and get them healed. I want you to think about one thing. You say, well, that person didn't get healed. So I'm not going to do it anymore. Well, maybe the last person I laid hands on didn't get healed either. Well, let me tell you one thing for sure and three for certain. The higher the average of a person laying hands on the people is going to be the higher average of people who get healed. It's just going to be that way. The average of numbers will, will manifest. So guys just... Find somebody this week to love on and, and get them healed and run the devil out of their life. <laughs> I thank you for allowing me to speak to you. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. That's good. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address PO Box 7752 Greensboro, North Carolina 27417 If you would like to contribute to our ministry please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button Thank you and may God richly bless you for your giving